I came down to run a family farm in 1970 just to see how I enjoyed life on the farm. We moved here, I had no idea of what kind of a community was here. We knew there was a hospital, we knew there was a college, but I uh, had no idea that there was sort of a life. I was kind of escaping New York City in my college years. We drove through town with a real estate agent, you know, and just sort of pointed out, there's the courthouse and something. But I wasn't really aware of the extent of architecture that remained from the 18th century, and a lot of other good architecture as well. So it was only after I'd been here a while. But that's the kind of first things I would have noticed, because that was my major interest was, was architecture. But when you drive down the street in those days, um, you know, it, was, it stood out as being quite an unusual structure right in the center of town. And it sort of caught my eye. And I talked to my father about it. And we made a stab at buying it. And we were unsuccessful the first time. And, and uh, we succeeded, ultimately, in 1977. And uh, my father was very practical and realized that there had to be some economic engine driving the project. So we uh, decided that the best bet was to run it as a bed and breakfast country inn. Because it was constructed as a tavern, I mean, as a residence in 1733, and by 1787, it was being run as a tavern, we figure. But then in 1845, it was purchased by the Eliasson family. And they ran it as a general store and lumber yard forever, you know, until they stopped doing that. Then they rented it to the Polish of Sapola wow. as a shoe store. So it, uh, it didn't have... Very few have owners. That's... Very few owners. Yeah. Incredible. Yeah. So, um, you immediately realized that you were going to do a dig before? We, uh, we wanted to. We had a restoration consultant, Michael Bourne. He's done lots of work in town and was a great influence on us. And I'm sure he had the idea to do an archaeological dig and contacted a, um, an archaeologist who was teaching a course at uh, Queen Anne's Community College. And uh, he was, came in with his class for three weeks. And six months later, they, they pulled out because we really had to get going. And uh, so we found all this extraordinary stuff, which we had something like 360 a and shopping bags full of 70,000 shards and the like. And uh, they what were- What was the most significant finding? In your well, I think the most significant finding is, that, is a charger that has a, a bird on it which is probably not a white swan, but you could call it that if you chose to. It has the date 1730 on it. So it's what they call an index artifact. And uh, it is pretty significant find. We found all the pieces of it in a, uh, in a tanning pit. Because before the um, white swan was actually built in 1733, there was a previous owner of the property who lived in what we now call our Lovegrove Kitchen. And the Lovegrove Kitchen is named after John Lovegrove, who was a shoemaker who had his operation right back here. And that's still standing. So that's one of the earliest structures in Chestertown, dates from 1728. And in the tanning pit, we found a nest of these broken chargers. And uh, the biggest and the best one we have pieced together in the museum display. Well, after the archaeological dig was finished, we started to strip out all the interior down to the bare outside walls. And in that process, Michael was able to determine very accurately what it looked like originally. There had been some question marks, but it was at that time, the supposition had always been that it had been a gamble roof structure originally. But we actually found in the brickwork in the gable ends the marks of the gable, of the gamble roof. So that was confirmed. And uh, so we learned a lot during that process. And then the next process was drawing up the plans for their actual restoration. We started in the fall of 77, or in 78, gutting the place. And then we didn't open until 
the, uh, 1981. Well, when we opened, it was great fun because we were the only game in town. <coughs> there was the Hills Tourist Inn and two motels on the outer, outside of town. But we were the only place to come. Good morning, White Swan.